My name's David Clarkson and I'm the minister here at Barclay View Forth Church. We're currently still in lockdown so we're not able to meet in our building and all of our activities are online for the moment. We recommend watching the services at barclayviewforth.online.church where you can join in the chat that goes in the box down the right hand side of the screen. You can catch up with services and other things that are happening in the congregation at our website barclayviewforth.org.uk or we're on social media on YouTube, Facebook and Instagram. Our pastoral assistant Elaine is now going to share some news. Good morning. Sadly I have joined you this morning to report the death of one of our members, the Reverend Eric Jeffrey, who when he retired moved local to the church and worshipped with us and most of you will know him as the man who sat behind the organist because he loved to follow the music because he was a musician in his own right. Eric sadly died last weekend and so our thoughts and our prayers are with Carol his wife and all of the children and grandchildren wherever they are in the world. There will be no funeral at this time, although we will mark Eric's passing when we are back together um, with a musical piece at the end of a service sometime later this year, we hope. So please join me now as we think and pray for the family. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the life of Eric Jeffrey. We thank you that you called him into ministry to be a shepherd who looked after your sheep, not only in this city, but across the world in Malawi. Father, we pray that as Eric looked to Jesus all the days of his life, that Jesus would support and comfort his family, his friends, particularly Carol, and their children and grandchildren. Bless them, Lord. Go before them in these days of mourning. But Lord, we also rejoice that Eric is now at home and at peace with you, a place he longed to be. So we thank you for his time with us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our Alpha course started last Thursday and it's on again this Thursday at 7.30. There's still time to join in, so please uh, continue to pray about who you might invite and uh, for invitations that have gone out into the parish that the, the right people would respond and be at the course. We're going to sing a song uh, just to ask God to, to work in us and through us and to build his kingdom.
Let's pray together. Almighty and suffering God, we join together once more to worship you. We're not in our building and we miss that. We miss the friendship that we share when we're physically present together. But we're thankful that we can use technology to gather in this way. It's now one year since the word COVID-19 entered our vocabulary. And there have been so many deaths and people struggling with their health during this year. And then there's the loss of jobs, poverty, lack of social contact that have made everything more difficult. And of course, church buildings have been closed. We are thankful for medical staff who are working long hours to support staff, shop workers, lorry drivers, so many people who have kept things going. We've also seen people looking out for neighbours, renewing a sense of community. Our style of worship has changed as we've adapted to the circumstances. But we thank you that you don't change. The hand that shaped the universe continues to hold it together. Your love continues to move and to work in all things. And so we worship you. We offer our praise and we come with joy and thanksgiving. We acknowledge you as Lord of our lives and ask that you would meet us wherever we are with new power. Inspire us with new vision. Fill us with new hope. And send us out with new purpose. Amen. Today we start our series on prayer. 
and I'm going to hand over to Stephanie, our families and children worker, to tell us more. So, you know, we're, we're going to spend a few weeks thinking about prayer and praying and all that kind of stuff. I thought we should maybe start with praying. So let's just pray together. Uh, what, what are you doing? Praying. Why, why, are you, pray. why are you doing that? You know, humbleness and so. All right. Just because that's what we were always told to do. Oh, okay. Okay, right. Well, I'm, yeah. Okay, I'm let's, just, let's put it in. Up my hands to God. Excellent. Good, good. Okay. We're all doing something different, but that's okay. Let, let's pray. Oh, Lord, we come to you Wait this morning. Wait a minute. What, what are, are you doing? doing? I'm, I'm praying. Is that how you pray? Is that how you talk normally? No, it's how, how, how um, that's what we do, though, when we pray. You no. sound a bit miserable. Oh, but, but God's holy. I mean, God's different. And, you, you know, you, you, you have to speak to him differently. No, God is our best friend. We speak to him like I'm speaking to you now. Oh. Mm. So we've oh. all got it wrong. But we've all got it right, but we've all got it wrong. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we need to do a bit more thinking about this. Mm. Good morning, dear Kingdom Kids. Good morning, dear families. Thank you for joining us today again. It is good to see you. Well, you just saw us, adults, praying, taking a very uncomfortable and weird pose, speaking very gravely and importantly. And as we talked, about how we prayed, we realize that this is not how we want to pray. We don't see God as a state official. God is our friend. God is a family member. And so just as you would like to hang out with your sister or sit on the lap of your mom or dad or your stepmom, stepdad, your uncle or aunt. This is how we can engage, how we can talk, sit with God. And so I have a little, maybe challenge, a little exercise for you. Listen up. What I want you to do now and Dear parents or guardians, uncle, aunts, I would like you to just let the kids try themselves out. And I would like to encourage you to do it with them. If, if you're alone at home at the moment, then this addresses you directly as well. So my little exercise with you is find a position you feel comfortable at. That's it for now. Get up off your chair and think about how would you like to sit, maybe lie on the floor, maybe lie on your belly, maybe, I don't know, sit in your bed. Where, where and how would you like to sit, to lie down, find a position you feel comfortable at. Eyes open or eyes closed. Now I want you to breathe in that position and I'm going to read the Lord's Prayer and after every sentence I will pause and give you time to think about what I just read. All right, you just concentrate on breathing and what I read, what I pray, 
And at the end, we say Amen together. All right, take a breath. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those, as we forgive the people who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but set us free from evil. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. And together we say, Amen. Thanks for that, Stephanie. Now we have our Bible reading from Una, followed by a new song, Counting Every Blessing. Today's reading is from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 6, reading from verse 5 to 18. Jesus said, When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. This then is how you should pray. Our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive them their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show men that they are fasting. I tell you the truth. They have received their reward in full. But when you fast, Put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I was blind, now I'm seeing color. 
I was dead, now I'm living forever. I had failed, but you were my redeemer. I've been blessed beyond all measure. I was lost, now I'm found by the Father. I've been changed from a ruin to treasure. I've been given a hope and a future. I've been blessed beyond all measure. I am counting every blessing, counting every blessing. Let it go, I'm trusting when I cannot see. I am counting every blessing, counting every blessing. Surely every season you are. Pursues me. Surely your heart is still for me. I will remember your mercies all my days through every storm. So the theme of today's service is uh, teach us to pray. And I thought we would just have a wee chat about that and about prayer, because over the next weeks, as you know, we're going to be thinking about the Lord's Prayer. So the first question, I suppose, should be, what is prayer? Well, for me, prayer is getting into or stepping into that dialogue that conversation with god it's for me not just about chatting and talking 
and the most challenging part, but also to listen to what I feel God might be saying. Yeah. Yeah, just what Stephanie said. <laughs> but seriously, um, it's like when you, your best friend, you share lots of news with your best friend, you tell them all the good stuff, you tell them all the rubbish stuff, you cry. Well, that's God is my best friend. I have other best friends, but God is the best best friend. And so I want to speak to him about the things that are making me cry and will make him cry. I want to speak to him about the things I'm celebrating um, and because he celebrates with me as well. Yeah, just what they said. <laughs> um, I suppose it's also just knowing that God is there all the time and is a constant companion and you can speak anytime, you know, in the shower, brushing your teeth, in your beds, you know, in the middle of the night, anywhere, God is, God is there waiting um, to, to be with you. And, um, you know, it's just that awareness. Yeah, okay. So that's an interesting idea that, that it sort of can be any time. But when, when we were growing up, or when I was growing up, um, you know, that there was a kind of emphasis on having a special time, a particular time that you set aside uh, as being really important. Do, do any of you do that? Do you have a particular time that you pray? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so for before you eat your food um that's one or before night and as a teenager i even really had to struggle with developing a bad conscience if i would forget mm -hmm. um to pray at night uh it was just that feeling that i neglected god in some way or something like that but i would say now i'm really thankful um not so bad conscience, but I'm very thankful for having been taught uh, the specific time before going to bed. Um, loving what Julie said, but also having this kind of rhythm developed, knowing that this is a time where I definitely come yeah. to quietness. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say, Stephanie, I smiled when you said about um, praying before you go to bed because sometimes I'm so tired at the end of the day and you know I, I get into bed and I'm lying and I'm praying and I have to confess I fall asleep because exhaustion takes over but then I learned actually what I'm doing is praying through the night because that I then wake up in the morning and say Amen. Knowing that God has blessed the night and all my thoughts and so on. But um, like you, I have a time in the morning when I just sit down and do my Bible reading and I pray for the day or whatever. Um, and then there are other times through the day, depending on what's happening. Um, I like to do arrow prayers sometimes when we're in a jam or something on the news. And, you know. For me, it's changed a lot over the years and sometimes it's not been consistent and sometimes more so and um, different things for different seasons of life and also seasons of the year because at the moment <laughs> when it's cold and dark and I'm very lazy I stay in bed and um, I use two bible apps and that's the first thing I do when I wake up is I put on my pray as you go and I just lie and cozy under the covers with my pray as you go. And then a bit later on, I'll do um, Lectio 365, um, all from the comfort of my own bed. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> no, I, I think I feel like we're at the start of a real adventure because there's nothing better than really connecting and communicating with God. I'm married to Linda, but if you heard that we never spend any time together and we don't talk to each other, 
you might wonder about the quality of our marriage, even though we've got a certificate. I think it's the same in our relationship with God. It's not enough just to have a baptismal certificate or to be a member of a congregation. Prayer is about relationship with God. And over these next few weeks, we want to help all of us grow in that relationship that we have with God, wherever we're starting from. My hope is that we will get better at hearing God's voice and experience more of his presence. And I hope that you get to process some of your disappointments and your struggles in prayer. Some of you watching this might be pretty new to Christianity and so you know what we say is going to be accessible. Others may have been Christians for many years, but actually there's always more to learn. Archaeologists keep digging stuff up that shows that people have always prayed. People in many faiths pray every day. And even atheists admit to praying sometimes. Real prayer is a two-way conversation with a, a God who is alive and real, who loves and listens to the things that we say. Jesus said that we were to ask for anything in his name and it would be done. Have you ever wondered why so many people pray? Well, Albert Einstein said that there's really only two ways to live. As if nothing is a miracle, or as if everything is a miracle. See, either life's a fluke, and we're just a bunch of highly evolved animals and a big rock lost in space, or there's a creator behind creation, a God behind goodness. And if so, then connecting with him in prayer is pretty much the most mind-blowing thing that we could do. But in case you've not noticed, God is pretty much invisible. And it's not always easy to hear him. There are distractions and disappointments and questions that we all share. In Luke chapter 11, verses 1 to 4, Jesus gives the Lord's Prayer. And it says this, One day Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Just as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give each of us our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who sins against us and lead us not into temptation. The one thing that the disciples explicitly asked Jesus to help them with was prayer. Lord, teach us to pray. There is no record of them asking, teach us to preach, or teach us to plant churches, or teach us to share our faith. They said, teach us to pray, because they could see that this was the key to everything about Jesus' ministry. These men went on to have incredible prayer lives. They prayed over handkerchiefs and people who touched were healed. They end up raising dead people. Once at a prayer meeting, the building they were in just physically shook by the power of prayer and the Holy Spirit. They even pray for their persecutors at the point of death. But they had to start somewhere. And they understand that, so they ask for help. And we need to say, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach me to pray. Because it can be difficult at times. There's a story of Teresa of Avila who was a nun in the 16th century and she wrote that sometimes she would shake her hourglass to make the hour of prayer seem to go quicker. Everyone has a different idea of what prayer actually means and that's because really there's lots of different ways of praying. There isn't just one way, it's a bit like a toolbox. If you take your, your toolbox out, there's a load of different tools in there. There's hammers and chisels and screwdrivers and measuring tapes and all sorts of stuff. And, you know, you know that if the tools are there to do a different job. So if you called a handyman round to fix something and said, well, I only know how to use a hammer. I've never used a screwdriver. You might think that he wasn't a very good handyman. The Lord's Prayer is a bit like a toolbox. And we're going to go through the different tools together over these next few weeks. Next week it's, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. So we're going to be looking at adoration, the hallowing of God's name. Now you might be watching and thinking, I thought only special people prayed, or 
I don't know the words or even, you know, what, what would you pray about? Of course, there might be someone who's thinking, this is far too simple. I've known this stuff for years. And if that's you, then bless you and keep praying. But also keep listening because nobody knows everything about prayer. The best bit of advice I ever got about prayer was this. Keep it simple, keep it real and keep it up. Keep it simple, keep it real and keep it up. If we uh, read the message version of Matthew chapter 6 verse 6, here's uh, what it says. Here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so that you won't be tempted to role play for God. I have to be honest, I think I might have done that once or twice. It goes on, just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. The focus will shift from you to God and you'll begin to sense his grace. The world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant. They're full of formulas and programmes and advice, peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. Don't fall for that nonsense. It's your father you're dealing with. And he knows better than you what you need. With a God like this loving you, you can pray very simply. And then he goes on to give them the Lord's Prayer. So Jesus is quite explicit that we should keep it simple, but also keep it real. Notice that he says that we've not to role play for God, but we've got to be honest. We're not to pretend. And actually I find that the Bible is way more honest often than the church about the pain and the disappointments that unanswered prayer brings. There's a parable that Jesus told about the Pharisees and the tax collector. Who, they went to the temple to pray. And I imagine Jesus telling it to the crowd when there will have been Pharisees in that crowd. And Jesus says the Pharisee, well, he went to the front and, and he looked great and he prayed all the right prayers. You know, the kind of thing, I, I thank you that I'm not like other people and particularly not this tax collector. And then you get the tax collector and, and he, they were despised at the time. And he's sort of hiding in the corner, rocking backwards and forwards, just saying, Do you know, I, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Help me. And then Jesus asked the crowd which one went home having been heard by the Father. And it was the tax collector. So Jesus was saying, be honest, be real, be yourself with God. So we've got to keep it simple, we've got to keep it real. But Jesus also says that we've got to keep it up and not stop praying too soon. Again, he told another parable about a woman who lost a coin, but she searched the whole house, tidying everything up. And she went on and on until she found it. She didn't give up. And Jesus says that we must keep praying and not give up. We kind of obsess about getting the right words, the right techniques, but that doesn't impress God. He, he's interested in our heart. He knows the kind of day we've had and the weird little things that go on in our head and he interprets and understands our prayers. In fact, Romans chapter 8 verse 26 says this, Meanwhile, the moment we get tired in the waiting, God's Spirit is right alongside helping us along. If we don't know how or what to pray, it doesn't matter. He does our praying in us and for us, making prayer out of our wordless sighs and our aching groans. Keep it simple, keep it real and keep it up. And so this week, we want to encourage you to do some things. Find somewhere that you're comfortable and safe. Read the story again in Matthew chapter 6 or in Luke chapter 11. And take time each day to pray the Lord's Prayer. And if you can, do it the way Stephanie showed us, pausing at the end of each line to insert those things that come into your head and your heart as you hear the words or read the words. And we believe that that will be a real help and encouragement to you. For now, let's pray. And what I'm going to do is simply say uh, a few words and then I'm going to leave space for you to pray your prayers. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are the creator and sustainer of life. That you hold everything in your hands. That you give us the sun that we long for during the winter. 
it, it heats us and, and it provides warmth. It helps the plants to grow and the world to flourish. But we know that there's much that is wrong in the world today. And so we bring the things that are in our heads and our hearts before you. And Father, we pray for our country. So much bad news about COVID. So many people have died. There's real stress and anxiety in the health service. We have Brexit that has caused difficulties for lorry drivers and for companies. There's lots of things. And so we take just a moment to pray for our country. And Father, we pray too for our community, for the, the folks who live and work in the parish. We have a particular responsibility for them. And so we, we need your help as we seek to get to know them and to be able to share your love with them, particularly at the moment because we, we can't do that physically. And so, Father, we pray now for our community. And lastly, Father, we want to pray for ourselves. Watching this service, we are in different places. We have different experience, different upbringing, different background, different employment, different circumstances. And so we just pause to bring those things that are on our hearts, the, the things that, that stir us, the things that worry us, the things that have been a burden. So we just pray for ourselves. Our Father, we thank you that you hear and answer prayer. And we ask that you would hear the prayers that we have spoken or thought today. Amen. The band has put together a medley of songs asking that the Holy Spirit would come, would speak to us, would, would empower us and enable us to serve God better. And so as we think about prayer and we think about Holy Spirit's part in that, we're just going to listen, take that opportunity to reflect and to ask God to do his work in our lives.
And so we come to another thing that Jesus taught his disciples. They asked to be taught to pray. But he taught them so many things over the years. And the way he lived and the way he spoke and dealt with other people. One thing in particular that uh, was a command that we are also to follow was that we would share a meal together. That we would take bread and wine. And of course we can't do it the way we would normally do it, passing uh, elements backwards uh, and forwards to each other. And so we are obedient to the command that Jesus gave. We want to remember him. We want to take bread and wine together. And so we come to that point now, recognising that it's not the same, but understanding also that we want to remember and we join together wherever we are, in celebrating all that Jesus has done for us. And so Jesus was with his friends and they were having a meal together. And he took some of the bread and he broke it and he passed it to them. And he said to them, take this bread and eat it. It's my body that's broken for you. And then later in the meal, he took some wine in a cup. And he passed it round. And he said to them, this wine represents a new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you that Jesus taught not only his disciples then, but teaches us now how to pray. We thank you that when you instructed them, when you taught them and trained them, they were able then to go and put that into practice. And so, the word that was written down for us in the New Testament came because they had learned from you and because you inspired them. And we learn from them and we learn from you and we thank you that we learn about Jesus' death on the cross. We learn that he went willingly that he was obedient to his father's instruction. We learn of the cost of that. But we learn too that his death wasn't the end. His body was broken and his blood was shed. But that wasn't the end of the story. We are living that story even today. And so, Father, we thank you. And as we come now to take this bread and wine, we ask that you would help us to remember, to think of all the, the things that we've had because we, we believed in you and we trusted. Forgive us for those times when we've just got it wrong. But what we've done hasn't honoured you, hasn't brought you glory, where we haven't hallowed your name. And Father, in this meal we can find forgiveness, because that's what was accomplished at the cross. Our sins can be forgiven, we can be made new and clean and whole with you. And so, Father, we thank you for Jesus and for this meal that reminds us of him. Amen. And so we want to be obedient to that 
command of Jesus that we would take bread and wine and in doing so we would remember him. And so now we share together in taking the bread. And likewise together, we share the wine. And let's pray together. Our Father, we on this earth will never understand fully the significance of what happened at the cross. We'll never understand fully what it means for us to be obedient to that command of Jesus and to be taking this bread and wine together today. And we pray that it won't just have been habit or ritual that brought us here. But we are here because we love him and we want to learn to love him more. Because we want to serve him. Because we want to speak of him. To share him with our friends and family, our neighbours, our work colleagues. Because he is life in all its fullness. And so Father we thank you for this opportunity to share together. In Jesus name and for his sake. Amen. I want to thank you for being with us today. We hope that you have a, a good week. And we look forward to seeing you next week. If uh, you're interested between the 10.15 service and the 11 o'clock service, around about quarter to 11, some of our folks are on Zoom and it's just a, a chance to, uh, to meet some folk there, to bring your coffee and have a chat either catch up with people you know or make uh, acquaintance with folk that you don't know. And so that option is open for folk uh, to join in there as well. And if you click on to the Church Online platform, you'll get a link for that um, each week. Thank you for coming. Look forward to seeing you. Have a great week. Bye for now. <laughs>